Okay, friends, here we are. Coming to the end. Chapter 18, The Royal Nest. Ben and Pearl tiptoed out of the den. None of the satire soldiers expect noticed the escape. Vlad and Vic were too busy grazing on the lawn, and the other soldiers had their nose buried deep in their lunch bags. The tree's staircase was much steeper than the one that led to the 10th floor of Dr. Wu's hospital. Halfway up, Ben's legs began to burn as if his muscles had caught on fire. Don't look down, he warned just after doing that. He closed his eyes for a moment, feeling a dizzy spell, and then he reopened them and continued to climb. I can't believe that we met Maximus Steele, Pearl said. Dr. Wu's gonna be so surprised when we tell her. And she's gonna be angry, Ben said. They had a lot of bad news to deliver. Maximus had not only gained the Griffin King's trust, but he had also threatened to keep Dr. Wu out of the imaginary world forever. Round and round and round they went. The branches grew thicker, blocking their view. Ben had no idea how far they had climbed, and then he bumped into Pearl. She had stopped walking because they had reached the top. Wow, he said. The royal nest was perched in the tree's uppermost branches. Unlike Metalmouth's nest, which was made of metal and forged by the dragon's fiery breath, the griffin's nest was woven from sticks and it was the size of Grandpa Abe's living room. Can you imagine if I added this to my nest collection? Pearl asked. Ben had seen Pearl's nest collection. She kept it in her bedroom, which was right above the dollar store, and there was no way she could get this nest through the front door. Look, Pearl said as she walked to the center of the nest and picked up a feather. Not an ordinary feather, but one that was golden and the size of an oar. It's light, she whispered. Really? Ben couldn't believe it. Cautiously, he stepped into the nest, testing each branch before he let his full weight upon it. A few creaks and groans sounded, but the woven branches held tight. Ben took the feather from Pearl's hands. Amazing. This huge feather weighs less than the piece of a toast. Pearl shielded her eyes with her hand and looked at the sweeping view. This is great. I wish I could live here. My bed would fit, my dresser, and most of my stuff. Ben wanted to sit down because the height was making him a little bit dizzy again. But what a view it was. Beneath the sun-kissed sky, the golden gate gleamed and yellow good mood flag rippled in the gentle breeze. To the right, the hedge-lined path stretched as far as their eyes could see. To the left, a dense forest grew dappling with shadows. And straight ahead, a tapestry of rolling hills sparkled yellow, like fairy dust. Do you think that that's where the fairies live? Pearl asked. Well, it kind of makes sense, Ben said. How odd that question sounded if he had heard it a week and a half ago before he had known anything about the imaginary world. He checked the sky for signs of the Griffin King. If the king discovered that they had escaped, well, then he would surely put them back into the cage. Hopefully, the king's hunting would take a while longer. Come on, we better get going. We still have to find meow. Mr. Tabby? Ben and Pearl darted around. A speck of color peeked through the patch of leaves. Ben hurried to the nest edge and pushed the leaves aside. And sure enough, a tabby cat was clinging to the end of a branch his eyes wide with fear. The hair on his back stood up like bristle, bristles on a scrubbing brush. Ben was happy to see that Mr. Tabby was alive and well, and he was equally happy to see that the vial of fairy dust was still tied around the cat's neck. Ben had never owned a cat, 
but he knew that while they were good at climbing up trees, they were terrible at climbing down. The fire department had visited the neighborhood last summer to help Mr. Fuzzy, a prize-winning Himalayan, out of a palm tree. Luckily, the firefighter had been wearing protective gear because the cat had gone ballistic with hissing and scratching. Hold on, Pearl said. She climbed out of the nest and stepped onto the branch. She took three steps before the branch creaked, and then it started to crack. Watch out, Ben cried, pulling her back into the nest. The cat growled as the branch wobbled. The leash dangled from his harness, swaying in midair. Drat, Pearl said. How are we going to get him? She opened her mouth real wide and hollered. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Ben put his hand over her mouth. Don't do that. Last time we yelled, here, kitty, 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 the Griffin King heard us, remember? Pearl nodded, and then she moved Ben's hand from her face. But how were we going to get him off that branch? We can't let him fall. That would be so sad. Poor Mr. Tabby. Was that a tear in her eye? Now the cat did not look one bit happy. He spit and hissed and growled all at once. If we had a cat toy or a treat or... Ben reached into his pocket and pulled out a macker. I forgot about these. He held it by its rubbery tail. Look, Mr. Tabby, look what I have, yummy, yummy. But the cat paid no attention to Ben. He dug his claws into the bark, holding on for dear life. The macker didn't work. I'm going to have to climb out there, Ben said, and then he winced. Had those words actually come out of his mouth? Really? Pearl asked. Do you think it's safe? Ben had never heard Pearl ask that particular question. He suspected she had never actually asked that particular question in her entire life. And the fact that she had chosen this moment to do so made him very worried. But Ben ignored that feeling. He had been learning to do that lately. The branch that jutted out from the trunk just below the cat's branch looked to be much thicker. Perhaps it could hold Ben's weight. He removed his tie. Quick, distract him with this. Pearl took, to, took the tie and flicked it around like a piece of yarn, and the cat slowly turned its head, watching the tie as if hypnotized. Ben walked four steps down the staircase and then climbed onto the thicker branch. Don't look down, don't look down, he told himself. He also thought, I cannot believe that I am still doing this. Scooting on his bottom, he inched his way forward until he was directly below the cat. Sitting on the end of the branch, high above the ground, certainly contradicted this very cautious instinct of Ben's body. But there, but there was a saying that he had heard thrown about, caution to the wind. It seemed like that was the right thing to do right then. Good kitty, Pearl said soothingly. And as the cat shifted position, his branch cracked again. His hissing and he spat, his yellow eyes filled with wild terror. The end of the leash dangled just above Ben's head. Hurry, Pearl told Ben, he's freaking out. He's freaking out. Ben's entire body had broken into a cold sweat. Gripping the branch with his left hand, he reached out with his right with his right, his fingertips barely brushed the dangling leash. 